Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's session. My name's Tom, I'm with Phoronix. Great to be with you today. Um, so today's session is on imaging. Please put your questions in the Q&A if you have any during the session. I've got my colleague Uma with me and he'll be taking the Q&A. Um, so we'll, we'll stop for a minute or two at the end of the session to look at the questions. Today's session is on imaging, but if you have an idea for a topic that you'd like to see for a future Foronix blog or a future webinar, please just pop that in the Q&A as well. I'm just going to run a quick poll, nothing formal, to give you a chance to answer what you're looking to get out of the session. Um, just one or two, just a couple of questions there. Um, if you wouldn't mind just uh, taking a minute to have a look at those questions, just to help us um, understand what you're looking for for imaging. Just give it a few more seconds. I can see a few answers there already. Okay, thank you very much for your answers there. That's that's really helpful. Uh, interesting variety of answers. Thanks for participating in that poll. So a very happy new year to all our customers and partners. So the turn of the year, start of January is often the chance to assess what state is your hardware in? Um, so bearing that in mind, we thought it would be useful to run a session on imaging. Whether you're looking at refreshing your hardware or maybe completely overhauling it, or maybe you already do a lot of imaging already and you're looking for ways to make it more efficient, then this session should help you. So what do we mean by imaging? What are we talking about? We could define it as the process of capturing all the software and settings on a workstation to push out to more workstations. So that's typically important in any environment where there's lots of endpoints and you want the desktop experience on those endpoints to be consistent. With Phoronix Cloud, in your cloud console, you've got one imaging page. So on that imaging page, you've got easy access to all the imaging information across all your computers. And you've got options on that page for performing USB imaging, cache imaging, and pure cloud imaging. So administrators with Phoronix Cloud can easily create and capture images of a specific operating system from a reference computer and deploy it to other computers. So there are many benefits to Foronix cloud imaging. With cloud-based imaging, you can capture and deploy OSs to all your remote computers from any browser. Windows migration is made much easier, so you can upgrade from Windows 8.1 to Windows 10 and Windows 11 and every version thereafter. You can boot brand new target computers at your convenience by using Pixie booting. So when you take a computer out of the box, the imaging process is really extremely easy. You can predefine your installation settings so you can automate that out of the box experience. You can deploy a standardized OS image to any computer regardless of the vendor or the model. You can capture a golden image, your, your perfect image of different OS versions with just a few clicks. And with your images, you can store them in one centralized repository and you can perform OS deployment on the fly. And deployment packages, you can create as many as you like. So if you have a diverse organization with lots of different types of workstation, types of user, you can create many deployment packages to meet the needs of 
um, your different categories of user. So this diagram here would show you what a typical setup looks like with Foronix Cloud. So just, you can see there, you've got an imaging server, which is serving all your workstations. So to set up the, you just need to set up the imaging server in your local network and configure the settings on the cloud console. And then in your network, you download and install the server and configure the imaging. So you'd have two options. You can either use the Windows deployment services. If you select that option, you can use advanced features like Pixie booting, and you'd have access to your existing images and driver repository. So the imaging server would automatically configure the Windows deployment service role at the end of the setup. And then the other option is to proceed without Windows deployment services. So you could select that option um, if you if you'd rather proceed without Windows deployment services. If you choose that option, Pixie booting is not supported in that setup, and images and drivers already set up in WDS are not accessible. So you'll need a Windows installation media like an ISO file or a DVD at the end of the setup process. So having um, installed the imaging server and configured the imaging, you then need to create a local user account to allow managed computers to communicate with this server and secure a network share. And then specify the, the location where you want the images to be held. So it's recommended to choose a location with enough free space to hold multiple OS installation images. So having selected your location, you would then just need to add the images, either ISO or WIM files, and the drivers, which would be INF files. This setup really shows the same thing, um, but just really showing that you can have as many imaging servers as you like. So that may, may make more sense if you have a larger number of endpoints. So cloud images are images exported from the imaging server and hosted on a publicly available server like HTTPS or SFTP servers. So in order to create cloud images, first launch the imaging server and then select your images so you can see all your images. And then you'd select the image that you wanna create a cloud image of um, and specify the folder for your cloud image zip archive. And after that archive has been creative, the created, you have two options. You can use HTTPS server. If you, if you use that option, the cloud images must be uploaded to a public, publicly accessible web server or cloud storage provider that supports HTTPS endpoints and just make a note of where those images are located in your cloud storage. Or you can upload to an SFTP server. If you select that option, the cloud images will automatically be picked up and uploaded to the SFTP server. So you can store multiple images in the same server, but each image must have its own link. And then after that cloud image zip archive or however many cloud image zip archives you've created after they've been registered. They'll appear as an image under cloud images in the cloud console and can be used to create a cloud deployment package. So when it comes to um, existing cloud images, you can register them if you want to upload them to a different HTTPS location or a different SFTP server or you can register the images in a different imaging server. Pixie boot imaging can save you a lot of time in the imaging process, because once you set it up correctly, you can set up new hardware on your network to automatically pick up the Foronix Cloud agent and also automatically pick up the default image on your imaging server. 
So you don't even really have to do anything to image this new laptop. It's pretty much just a case of taking it out of the box and turning it on. Image caching stores the captured image on a partition drive so that the computer does not have to connect to the imaging server to download the entire image during the actual imaging process. So that is especially useful if, for example, you've got a member of staff who leaves and you're re-imaging that computer for a new member of staff. You're going to save a lot of time with that. We've also got the option for USB imaging. So you just need to create the following steps to create a uh, a, a bootable USB drive, follow these steps. So, um, yeah, again, maybe useful in some smaller setups, but maybe less likely to be useful if you've got thousands of devices you need to image. So you launch the imaging server and click on USB media creator, then select the deployment package and the policy, then select the target USB drive if creating a bootable USB flash drive, or you can select USB Creator Package Path and then specify the folder in the local computer to create the installation media creator package. And then you can edit the, the partitions and assign the volume labels and the partition sizes and, and then just start. So that USB media package contains that policy and package that you've created uh, during the during the USB media creation process. So Veronix has a layered approach to imaging. So in general, a lot of organizations would create, create a golden image once a year, maybe. Um, but from Windows 10 onwards, it's becoming a bit more difficult to keep up with the new builds that come out frequently. So to simplify this, Phronix has implemented a modular-based image technique in the Phronix Cloud product, which will eliminate the need to create a new build or maintain a golden, golden image. So you, as an admin, um, when you're carrying out imaging, you can reuse most of those required components and dramatically speed up the deployment process. So Veronix Cloud allows admins to split that monolithic PC image into multiple logical layers, like an operating system layer, a driver layer, a user configuration layer, and an application layer. And they can then be deployed in a logical sequence to simplify the OS deployment process and make it less resource intensive. So the web-based cloud console of Veronix Cloud allows admins to easily manage the, the overall image deployment process, which makes it possible to deploy a single image to any computer maker model. So it doesn't matter what, it, it's device agnostic, um, hardware agnostic, which saves considerable amount of time because you're eliminating that need to create and maintain that library of multiple images. So there's never really been a one-size-fits-all solution to meet the requirements of every organization. But, but with Veronix Cloud's customized deployment packages, it becomes extremely easy to manage endpoints across a wide spectrum of hardware or software requirements. So this layered approach helps IT admins to have a much better control of all components of OS deployment. And you can achieve your organization's goal to implement an endpoint managed endpoint management strategy that capitalizes on the most modern technologies to support and protect increasingly complex endpoints anytime and anywhere. So we are reducing the complexity and cost when you compare imaging uh, manually. So this screen here shows you some of your options when you're setting up a deployment package. So you can have as many deployment packages as you like, but as you can see, you've got, um, you can choose your imaging server image, install settings, product key, driver groups. And then you've got a couple of advanced settings. 
you can run a custom script in pre-imaging and you can also choose as a post-imaging task to install certain app presets and you can install all pending Windows updates if you like. So during the imaging process, you're always going to know what's going on. So on this screen, I'm imaging four workstations and I can see exactly what stage they're up to. So the Cloud Console gives you total control over the imaging process. So just a few guidance, a bit of guidance on best practice with Fornix Cloud Imaging. So um, it's best to install um, Imaging Server on Windows Server OS if you want to use Pixie Booting capabilities, and then ensure that it is configured within the local network and it's got an SSD for faster performance. So try to keep the image as light as possible Use the latest Windows ISO for deploying Windows on managed computers instead of capturing a golden image and then deploying that to other computers. So keeping the image smaller will ensure a faster deployment and a lower use of network resources. So install all your required drivers using driver groups, and that will keep the OS image hardware independent. And then that same OS image can be used across lots of different types of hardware. If you install all the required applications using app presets, then that will keep that base image nice and light. And you can always install the latest version of that application of all your applications as a post imaging task. So much more efficient and also um, much healthier from a security point of view, because you're always going to be installing the latest versions of all your software. And you can um, make the most of the, the scripting functionality. Um, so you can configure all the required settings using your own PowerShell batch VB scripts. So just to recap on the on the steps involved to get started with Phoronix Cloud Imaging. Firstly, uh, sign up for Phoronix Cloud Deep Freeze and then uh, install the imaging server. And step three is to add the Windows ISO and the drivers to the imaging server. Then create your install settings under the Pharonix Cloud Console and then your deployment package or deployment packages if you have many. And then image the computer or you can just capture an, an image of an existing managed computer which you can then push out to other machines. So there are several advantages to using Phoronix Cloud Imaging. So the layered architecture allows a single image to be deployed to any device. You don't need to create model specific images for various hardware types. You can install Windows via a network. So that reduces the complexity and cost of manual when you compare it against manual installations. Phronix Cloud uses standard Windows file formats and a modern hardware independent methodology. You can use one image and deploy it to any device without writing complicated scripts. And you can, uh, you can keep your applications up to date totally independently of the Windows OS image. And it's faster than traditional imaging. Uh, if you add up the amount of person hours you would save, it's going to be a lot of hours. So just looking at the components of endpoint management, Phronix Cloud can help you in four key areas. So we've, we've spoken about imaging, um, which is part of the IT help desk quadrant, but we also help um, on the IT help desk side with a ticketing module and remote connect functionality. And then we, it's really a complete endpoint management solution of which imaging is one small part because we allow you to keep your Windows updates delivered automatically and all your software updates. And then we have 
um, a really powerful set of layered security tools. Um, and then also on the inventory and analytics side, you should always be aware of what's happening in your environment. There's a whole set of dashboards and reports. So you're going to be able to monitor the health of your workstations. So just looking at the life cycle of an endpoint, there's four major stages. So the first stage is acquisition, where you decide what you need, and then you go through the process of assessing what's out there, what do you want to buy, and getting budget approval. And then you've got to configure it, which is where imaging comes in. And then the third stage is deployment, as in actually getting that endpoint working in your organization. And then the fourth point is withdrawal. Once that endpoint reaches the end of its life, you need a plan for removing and replacing it. So Pharonix Cloud can help you at all stages of that journey. So in the acquisition stage, you're going to have access in Pharonix Cloud to an inventory page. So an inventory page will show you at a glance the status of all your workstations, all kinds of um, really useful information like the system drive usage, the operating system, the warranty end date, which will allow you to make strong decisions about what your strategy is for hardware acquisition. When you have acquired your hardware, Pharonix Cloud allows you to manage the applications really easily um, as part of the imaging process, as we've discussed and keep them totally secure. So there are four security tools there, which when, when put together are a really um, powerful way of protecting yourself from any threats that may arrive in your environment. Deep Freeze is a reboot to restore solution. So if configured in your Phronix Cloud policy, when you restart a workstation, it will restart in its original state. So that immediately eliminates any ransomware, any virus, anything bad um, will disappear on a restart. Anti-executable is an advanced whitelisting tool that will allow you to block executable files that you don't want to be run and block a long list of known ransomware. WinSelect is a way of customizing your desktop, um, locking them down, especially useful in public facing environments, for example, libraries or schools or universities. You can totally restrict what harm those users may be able to cause you. And then we've got a really powerful antivirus tool, which we offer in partnership with Bitdefender, so you can be protected on a live basis. And of course, the imaging process supports all that um, because you're imaging in a much more efficient and secure way than hopefully you would have been before. Then once your endpoints are configured, when, when, they're, when they're live in use in your organization, you can automate all your Windows updates, you can automate all your application updates so that you're always delivering um, updates to your live users as they become available. So you know that there's no time lag between Microsoft issuing a patch and it becoming live in your environment, but nor does there need to be any disruption to your users. It can all happen overnight and it can all happen um, on a schedule that you define uh, but there's no reason for it to take up any of your time and there's no reason for it to disrupt any of your users. And we also have a ticketing and remote control options. So you can allow your users to submit tickets by the cloud console and you can manage those tickets from the cloud and you can remote into your workstations 
with um, with one click. And under usage stats, you, you can run all kinds of reports on, for example, application usage, software license compliance, computer usage, login summary. So you're going to be, when you're managing your computers, you're going to feel like you're in control of what's happening. You're going to have the information you need at your fingertips. You don't need to guess about what's going on. Then when the machine reaches its end of life, which you would be able to kind of see happening in advance from the inventory page, you're going to be able to use that page to assess where your workstations are on their journey. Uh, then the imaging part is going to be really easy when we go around the cycle again. So just to recap the overall benefits of Phronics Cloud, we're going to save you a lot of cost um, in terms of person hours on imaging, but also in lots of other areas. We're going to eliminate a large proportion of your help desk tickets with the unique Reboot to Restore solution. It's a scalable investment. Software as a service, you only need to contract what you need. It's not a big commitment um, and it will save you time and money. It, it will give you a big return on investment very soon. And you're going to increase your security. You're, you're putting up many powerful layers in front of your endpoints to reduce the risk of getting hacked. So we offer a free trial. It's a 30-day free trial. You can sign up to that directly from our website. When you sign up to the trial, you just need to create a policy and up activate whatever functionality you need in your policy, then install the cloud agent on the devices you want to manage, and then you're ready to go. So everything I've shown you today with regard to imaging, feel free to just try it out for yourself. Um, test it in your environment with no commitment. So I'm just going to um, pause uh, in a second for Uma to answer the questions that we've had through the session. But just to show you on screen there, um, if you'd like to try for on its cloud, there's a QR code. Please scan that um, if you'd like to book a demo. Um, but I'm just going to hand over to Ume now to uh, to to go through uh, the questions. And please, if you have any more questions, please just pop them in the chat uh, for Ume to have a look at. Yeah, hello everyone. Uh, as I may be able to see, we do have one question uh, from one of the attendee, like. Uh, the question is in Pixie Boot, how a bare metal machine identifies the imaging server? Like, uh, what is the process? So, okay, uh, for that, uh, we, you know, via Pixie approach, we install our imaging server into one of our machines. Of course, that, that should be the server. And uh, that should be installed in the same network. And the machine in the network looks for broadcast request. Okay, which with the IP address, which returns the IP address of the imaging server. So then machine picks up, up the IP address of the server and starts booting as per configuration made in the imaging server. So this is the answer for one question. So another question we do have, that's like how many machines can be imaged from one server at a time? So as in, you know, as such, there are no such limitations or restrictions for imaging number of machines from one server, but in order to, you know, get OS deployed faster, we we'll recommend to use uh, to deploy different servers servers if the machines are more in number. So more number of machines, uh, you can split the servers and distribute accordingly. So that deployment can be done fast. So these okay. are the two questions I had. Okay, thank you very much, Shima. That's very helpful. Okay, thank you very much for your time, everyone. We hope you enjoyed the session and look forward to catching you on the next webinar. Bye-bye.